Thursday morning, everybody. Welcome on into today's Freight Waves Now Community Spotlight. Looking a little different than normal, but that's okay because it's Thursday morning and we're still here with Thomas Lawson to chat about loaded and rolling. Exactly. I know it's a pleasure to be on. This is the best part of your Thursday morning after all is the loaded and rolling update because, you know, you get a little bit of everything, but you never know what I'm going to find. I got ADD, so I don't even know what I'm finding half the time as well. It keeps it fresh. Hey, and if you go back and watch this week's episode of Loaded and Rolling, you're actually going to find us in this exact same spot looking the exact same. So maybe it's just like a little preview, post view of this week's episode where we dove into your most recent escapades up in Nashville at the 2024 Motive Conference. And we're not going to spoil anything here, but really quickly, just give us a lowdown. Throwback Thursday. We had the Tuesday loaded and rolling. Now on Thursday, we're going to talk about it. It was a really fun conference. The big takeaways as we're diving into this interview that we just did this week was that the hardware players are up opening up their game. We mm-hmm. talk about freight tech companies and it's all sexy and everything. And look at my TMS and look how I've done all this software. But over the past 10, Moda's been around for like 10 years. And then over the past like five years, they've just been chugging along. So they started doing this AI and, and then started in 17, 18, 19, 20. And then it got to a point where it's reached critical mass. And it's super cool. So they wanted to have a conference. I got invited, bada bing, bada boom. You want to listen to it because it's, it's one of those things where I think it will start putting in these hardware makers, ELD manufacturers are starting to recognize that they have all this wonderful data. Be, why should they always share it with other people with an A? Why don't I harvest some of this as well? Knowledge is power, as they say, and uh, a lot of knowledge coming together at that conference. And if you want a full breakdown of it, like I said, go check out that episode of Loaded and Rolling. Thomas, I got to know, hardware versus software, if you have to put them in a cage match together, who is coming out unscathed? Well, it's Tyson versus Jake Paul. <laughs> Tyson is hardware. He's been around for 30 plus years and he is a machine. He doesn't break. Jake Paul is very flashy. He's quick. He's spry. You know, he's, but he doesn't have staying power. And I always want to. he's got prime energy. He's got prime energy. <laughs> There's tons of energy. But I think in the hardware debate, hardware versus software cage match, venture capital firms, and I learned this from a startup as well, they really hate doing real things Mm -hmm. because you just can't make money off of doing real useful things. You build a factory, it takes like 10 years to be profitable. So now that we've seen the ones who have moved up, hardware is going to be more important than ever. We talk about all this new nearshoring and all this development and stuff. It's not going to be the super sexy third-party TMS. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the person who has the data and is building it, and then the super sexy TMS gets some of the crumbs. Yeah. Nothing's really real and uh, nothing actually matters, except what does actually matter is the way that the freight market is right now. And Thomas, this week we had a Dooner had on uh, Brush Passes Research, Kevin Hill, friend of Freight Waves, former employee here as well, talking a little bit about where the market is and specifically with his research that they do. They took a look at motor carrier uh, operating authorities and seen a pretty dramatic, dramatic, pretty dramatic, drastic, combine those two words there, drastic, like that's great, pretty drastic downturn in these operating authorities recently, somewhere near the tune of 25,000. What's up with that? I have the number. I looked it up as well. Our carrier details one was 24,250 fewer operating authorities compared to this time last year. That's falling off of a cliff. It is going down. And Kevin has great, look at the active brokerage data as well. So we saw that there's 24,000 carriers. Uh, Look at the the fallout with the brokerages. So it's it's rough on both sides. So here's some of the things I saw because I wrote about it earlier in the Daily Watch this week. We had went from 374 five. So three over about 375,000 unique authorities down to 350 by the second week of April, 2024. Not good. At the same time, we have had dips in spot market rates to where the bottom has been around 223. So it's going up and down like a a roller coaster of emotions. And then finally, so we're thinking, what does that mean? There's more contracted volumes. There's 12% more contracted freight in the market. And all it did was take outbound tender rejection rates. I'm looking at my phone here because I can't remember numbers for anything here. Uh, I like to write better. Uh, It went up to like 3.5 to 3.9%. And it was between that 2.5 to 3%. We only saw about 100, over 100 basis points of improvement Mm -hmm. with 12% more volume. It's a sponge. So it's getting 
better. Mm -hmm. It's getting more fungible. But at the same time, we're not at a point where we've reached that Goldilocks zone. We are not at it's just right. Right. So I know that I've spent the majority of 2024 and really kind of the last like six months of 2023 pegging experts. How long can people hold on in this down market? We're starting to see that it, they, they made a good show of it, but it is now at the point where it's like it's like Survivor, you know, where you have one of those challenges where you're hanging from the bar. You're like the last one on your team that's hoping for immunity. And you just got to let go and fall into the water at this point. That's the hardest part about this job because smaller trucker communities will get sometimes very militant and they, they don't like the fact that we do report on the fact that carriers are leaving the market. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is one of those things where we say capacity exits. It means you've gone out of business. Like I've told the panel at the Motive conference I came from, those of you in this room are okay. One, because you can probably afford the ticket. Two, you're well, you're well run enough to afford a ticket. Uh, and three, you're probably not talking about a lot of these spot market problems for the past six months to a year. Because if you are, that's the warning sign. Mm -hmm. Well run businesses will continue. It will be harder. So we have to make that difference because some of the loudest voices that we are hearing on social media are usually coming from some of the ones who were the worst prepared. And now they're complaining for page views and content. Because they're not possibly, you know, it's, it's one of those things where we've had a situation where there's so many content people pushing people into this market. It was a gold rush. TikTok was telling you to make hundreds of thousands <laughs> of dollars a year that the correction is ongoing. So, yeah, it's, it's fascinating to watch because it, here's the other thing I was talking about as well for the economic index. The two economists, I'll, share, I'll save the effort, they said that the economy was probably not going to get better by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. It's an election year, so we always want the data to look a little rosier, if, you know, depending upon who's in power. But the best part is that the economy could actually get worse, but the freight market, that's what I told them, could get better. Yeah. Because the freight market of supply and demand for transporting goods operates outside of, but is influenced by, macro trends. Mm -hmm. So you get 50-50 odds on a good day that a freight market downturn is going to make the macro one. We didn't really see that for a while. We've kind of seen this weird stuff, but that's my biggest takeaway. So do not worry. Even if it goes down, it may be better for you. Transportation industry, keep an eye out. But I uh, don't quote Thomas on <laughs> that one. He is not responsible for the choices that you make with your business, whether it stays insulated or goes out. And uh, that's the liability on that. Thomas, your show next week. You got anybody coming on yet? Or should we just uh, be patient, wait and see? Surprise guest. We got to plug the uh, Freightwaves Future of Supply Chain in Atlanta. That's the big one coming up on the radar. So you want to not miss that because you can see me in person. Don't ever meet your heroes, folks. But at least you can hear my voice or look at me from the stage. It's like going to a zoo. <laughs> but uh, don't throw anything at the uh, animals or the monkeys or only money. Thomas Watson and uh, just only money, only money at, at the animals. There you go. All right. <laughs> so live.freightwaves.com to get registered for that future of supply chain. We do still have tickets on sale. I'll be there in Atlanta as well. I'd love to see you there. Uh, make sure that you get registered for that. Where can the people find you, Thomas, other than right here on your Thursday mornings? If you want to check it out, freightwaves.com slash loaded and rolling. Every Tuesday at 2 p.m., we have the live show. Every Thursday at 2 p.m., we have the newsletter. If you missed it, just go to freightwaves.com slash loaded and rolling up, load it to the website, and you can subscribe there. And you might get a little discount code for Future of Supply Chain, too. All right, Thomas, thanks for joining us for our Freight Waves Now community spotlight. Even though she looks a little different, we'll see you next week.